Ross, we are a first year club this year, and that's been a bit difficult in a virtual setting, but we've been really successful given those circumstances. We do compete in DECA. This year competitions looked a little bit different given the virtual setting. And out of everyone who competed, we actually had over 20 advanced to state, which is occurring right now. And this was a really big accomplishment for us because we had such a large portion in advance and we were really proud of how we all did. Wow, Lauren. So so I'm I'm going to have to go home and get on my kid because he's he's a junior uh, in high school. He's vice president of his DECA club. And I'd learn more today from you, more eloquently, by the way, than he's told me in a lot of times. So you did an outstanding job of explaining all of that. Can you talk to us a little bit about that growth that you see in students uh, by participating in, in something like DECA? Every week is something new and we're doing our first state competition, we're doing our first district competition, and we're all growing together, uh, which is cool. So we're allowing each other to fail and mess up and at the same time just kind of pick ourselves back up and the resilience that these members have had is, is mind blowing. It's, it's impressive. That's brilliant. I, I love what you just said about working on it together and failing together and learning together. That That's incredible. We started talking about DECA. I kind of wanted to brainstorm what are some other areas that we've recently seen some student success even with things being virtual. So we're going to go left here. Good morning. Hello. Hi, Hello. How are you? Got some fashion stuff going and we made you guys some face masks. Wow. That's so <laughs> epic. I just like lay it out and take a picture to advertise their products. I could play bagpipes in those. You could, he what? does. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So now, now it's complete, like before I was like... Yes. Yeah, yeah, it was missing something. Complete. Right? Yeah, it was now it looks like it's ready something. to buy. Yeah, now it's ready to go. <laughs> so this is the monogramming machine. It's and yeah, it's kind of tricky to figure that's out. That's what did this? That's what did that. This is way more fun. Oh, good. <laughs> work. Miss Garner, we're here. Good morning. Hi. Hey, guys. Good, 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 good to see you. What made you pick this class? Like, why, how, how, did you, how did you get interested in this? Um, I didn't want to take this class last year, travel and tourism, but my track teacher was like, hey, you got to get an extra credit. I was like, do me one random. Let's just <laughs> roll the dice on this. <laughs> and I got put in this I one. Love it. And um, instantly I could tell she was an amazing teacher. You know, she's very energetic. Um, she teaches you in a way that you will understand it and not forget it. I am a sub-campus student, so for me, I, if I wanted to be in this class, I would have to like physically come here and drive over here. So for me, what made me want to get into this class was a trip that I took to Miami, Florida, like a couple summers ago. And I absolutely love it. I went to this resort and I remember just seeing a whole bunch of different people, like from different cultures and different countries. And I was like, this is so cool. This is so amazing. So I started like, um, my junior year, I started looking, I was like, what can I do to like, um, to, to see if I can do anything with like travel and hotels. And that's when I, I found this class. Do you have the support at home that you need to, to make these kinds of decisions or are you just good at taking well, care of yourself? I'm doing the most for my for myself. Like my mom's always stayed like in the safe zone. Like if you don't want to do it, it's okay. Like I support you no matter what. But I, it's more me that I'm like, I want to get out there. I want to like succeed and I want to go to college. She's like, it's okay. Like whatever you want to do. Like she's always like in my safe zone. But I want to get out of my safe zone and explore and like really look at the world, you know? Do you get scared when you're thinking about taking that risk and taking that leap? Sometimes, but I know I could do it. I know, I believe in myself. Absolutely. Hi. Hello, good Hi. Morning. How are you? Hi. Good. Y'all ready? ready? <laughs> I'll take you right here, sir. You follow me. Oh, take this guy. Oh, you got some. What do you got? Oh, yes, awesome. Sir. So what am I doing now? What can I get you for the things? Okay, I'm add just else for adding some things in, yeah? Yes, sir. Just get a little bit more flavor in. All right. This is looking good. Mine's going to be very interesting, I think. You're getting plenty of vitamin C and vitamin D. <laughs> yeah, with I got all those. All those yellow things in there. Yes, sir. Yeah. You want to go to make a smoothie? Perfect. You're getting a lot of fiber out of it, mm -hmm. so it definitely will come out later, but. Uh, <laughs> Say that one more time. That is impressive. Very yeah, good. Sir, These are the Valentines that the PALS program put together for fourth graders at oh, wow. Parkside. And so the PALS know the students well enough to know 
we've been pen palling back and forth. What the interests and their uh -huh. passions are, so they've designed slides. the box. Yep, yes. Because of the writing piece, too. Fourth so that's grade writing. Kind of so they did something oh, so authentic, writing so they forwards. can write, yeah, oh. you're writing back and forth. The learning that I see here is different from the learning maybe I see in the geometry class. And that is interesting. That's what our team's been talking about for the last year, and actually taking lessons learned from COVID and pushing forward. And so we're doing a whole PDSA cycle right now as an admin team to figure out how do we capture those those nuggets of truth that we've discovered. Uh, because as you can see, anybody can see when you go into these classes and you talk to kids, their faces light up. Correct. And so you want that same level of energy and enthusiasm to come across yes. when they're talking about each and every class and each and every educator. And Correct. so we're working on that problem as well. Mm -hmm. I don't have a good answer for you today, but yeah. if you check back in a month, I might mm -hmm. be onto something. <laughs> so. Well, and, and I don't expect an answer, but I think we should ask the question. I think it's a great question, and that is one that we're diving into and, and not leaving behind. Like I said, we, you know, we get into this mindset that we want to get beyond COVID, beyond COVID, but there's some lessons learned within mm -hmm. that we shouldn't be leaving behind. Absolutely. I think the thing that made the biggest impression on me today is seeing kids that are truly connected to their learning and passionate about what they're doing and talking about the facilitators of that learning with such uh, endearment, right, that you can tell that the relationships are incredibly strong and those relationships are what's really pushing the learning to a very deep level. So incredible work here for our students uh, at Rouse High School.